this is, uh, would ask for your recommendation. Okay. Any questions before I ask for a motion? It's, it's this is a new cell tower? No, this no. is this is a lease that was previously. This is uh, not a cell tower. I'm it's a uh, water tower utilization. Okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Prisco, motion, please. Number nine. Number nine. If you don't have a handy, it's right. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the notice of lease with T-Mobile Northeast LLC for the cellular facility located on Tower Hill Road and authorize the chairman to execute documents on behalf of the board. Second. Motion by Mr. Prisco, seconded by Mr. O'Leary. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, I see a lot of people here for our Vote on the TA's FY 2011 budget recommendations. Mr. Bill comes. Board members, you have a summary of the uh, items that were included in the presentation two weeks ago, but just to reaffirm what the, the dollar amounts are, the municipal operating budget recommended would be $11,556,730. Fixed cost appropriations would be $14 million. Uh, 019596. The school department budget, as uh, you had directed, would be 23269572. And then the last two items um, that I did not put on your sheet, but I do feel that they are worthy of um, your consideration this evening. You recall that we have two enterprise funds. The Hillview is at $1,703,000. $834, which is the amount recommended by the Hillview Commission. And you also have the Water Department Enterprise Fund, which is at $3,130,738. Um, and that includes the amounts that were incorporated into the rate increase that you approved effective, <coughs> excuse me, into the rates that you approved effective uh, July 1. And as you recall, there was an increase in there for the cost of purchase of water from the town of Andover. So. Uh, those are the, the, the big numbers. Um, be available to respond to any questions that you might have on the details. What uh, included in these numbers, uh, based upon our last meeting's discussion in relation to public safety and the overtime budgets, is it still static in relation to what you had previously presented, or have you made any yes. other adjustments? No, I'm, I'm recommending that we proceed uh, based upon the presentation to look to refund those accounts at the October town meeting from the FEMA reimbursements. I believe that the, uh, the amount that we're eligible for in the FEMA reimbursements uh, could be substantially more than I reported to the board a week ago. The time period that FEMA has given us for eligible costs is, is much greater than we anticipated originally. So I think the opportunity to recover a substantial portion, if not all of those monies, is very great. So, uh, if, from your perspective, um, we 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 can uh, at October town meeting fund the cuts to those two budgets, probably all from FEMA, and if not, from other available funds, yeah, if I necessary. Th you think the only issue that we'd be we'd be sweating on is the timing of these federal monies coming back to the town? All of our paperwork is required to be submitted in the next few weeks. Um, one of the motions that's on my report is to designate me as the uh, designee to sign off on all the documents. We have a time frame of about two weeks to complete all of that work. It goes into FEMA, and then um, we're anticipating those monies will be received um, in the upcoming months. Okay, but in our to at our October town meeting, if the funds haven't come in yet, we can yep. take an alternative uh, uh, move, and you know, when the funds come in, maybe take them out of debt stabilization, put them back in, or, or something to that effect. If we're committed to funding it, mm -hmm. then why aren't we funding it now? Because we don't have the funds to fund it right now. Otherwise, why would we have cut it? Unless we were to take it out of reserves. Yeah, we have to take it out of reserves. We didn't want to do that since we had money coming in. I don't think it's the intent of the board here yeah, not to fund it. I, I, I know of no one that's 
come to the conclusion that uh, it need not be funded. Uh, I know that Sean, when he analyzed the fire budget, said that you know they had not been spending the amount of money. So I mean, that, you know, I credit them to spending what they need and, and no more. Uh, the police budget, I believe, have been spending the entire overtime budget. Uh, the issue of the uh, the letter that was in the paper, uh, uh, on the letter that all the board members received, uh, uh, is more related to, uh, I mean, that may have spiked us getting the letter, but we have to go back to February when uh, the chief was concerned that uh, he was running out of overtime money. And uh, I believe that the general order that was referred to had nothing to do with us, but had to do with the administration basically taking steps to assure that the police budget wasn't uh, overspent. And I think shortly thereafter, my understanding is that there was a, the chief was mistaken in the amount of money that he had left in the overtime budget, and the general order was modified. So what was sent to us was just a, a means of uh, showing that uh, they weren't happy with us adjusting next year's budget when the issue that stemmed from the uh, general order to uh, throttle overtime and uh, reduce shifts when uh, up to the, the chief felt it wasn't necessary to, to bring someone in to replace someone out had nothing to do with our cut, but had more to do with the amount of money they were spending on overtime this fiscal year. And I'm sad to say that the union is, you know, stepped to those, uh, uh, those kinds of tactics, but the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, the cut that we were proposing and was proposing was a, a budgetary maneuver similar to the kinds of things that we've done to get ourselves through the past couple of uh, uh, budget processes. You know, for example, putting money in the stabilization fund at the uh, end of 2009 was, was with the intent of taking it out was a was a means of moving that money from one fiscal year to the other without potentially losing it. Uh, and uh, you know, the police uh, overtime budget was not cut last year, and uh, uh, if they s were close to spending it uh, for the year, then uh, you know uh, that's a management issue. It's not an issue. It should be an issue coming to us associated with uh, uh, us cutting, temporarily cutting their overtime budget uh, as we go into next year. No, I, I think that yeah. the uh, relation to the police department, you know, if they're spending all their overtime money that's been appropriated, uh, all indications that, that I've had and heard, and I think the rest of the members of the board, nobody's questioning, you know, whether or not enough shifts are being filled or too many are being filled. Uh, if anything, I think they've been managing it quite well. Uh, balancing it, trying to come in you know, within budget uh, based upon events and the demands of the department and the staffing level that has been imposed upon them as a result of the um, fiscal times that, that we're experiencing here now you know, requires additional overtime to be spent. Um, you know, and I know the recommendation was to, to pick these two departments uh, in hopes of uh, being able to backfill the money in October. But, and I know it's a shell game. I just uh, want to assure public safety people, you know, that, that we are committed to doing it. You know, and that uh, and I thought we were fairly clear on that. Uh, I think we should make it clear again tonight. If, that, if this is what we're going to go with this recommendation, that, that, that money's going to be restored, it's good news that the FEMA money could potentially be more than what's needed. But uh, I think everybody needs to be assured you know, that the level of public safety in the community is going to be maintained uh, to this minimal level uh, that we've already proposed in our budget. Mr. O'Leary, I'm just unclear as to maintain to the minimal level that's in the budget. What do you? We're not overstaffed in either one of those departments. We're no, not, but uh, their overtime budgets are significant. Fire is over six hundred thousand dollars, and police is over five hundred thousand dollars. But we know why that is. True. And right now, we're saying that we're going to reduce. We're going to reduce fire. 
In like, order to have two, in order to have three people in the station, and two people in an ambulance, it requires callback because we don't have enough personnel I, I, to not have the callback system. But I don't see how a cut of forty thousand dollars on July one, which they're going to get reimbursed seventy-five percent from FEMA as to their personnel cost during this extended time period of the flooding issues in March, how that affects them going forward. Uh, in any regard, especially on fire where in the last three years they turned back $53,000 in their overtime budget. Police, I understand, they're essentially in their views, they're, they're two men shot. But th still, their overtime budget is over $500,000. With the $40,000 cut, they're going to come out July 1 with about $480,000 in their overtime budget. If they can't manage that until October, there's a problem. A big problem. Big problem. I'm not so saying that they I don't can't see manage it until October, but I, again, I think we I need don't to see make clear as a board that it is our intention to go with our original proposals and the dollar amounts to get them funded <coughs> by October. Through October. I mean, I don't know if you're, not, if you're not willing to make that commitment. I'm willing to commit to fund them, reimburse them up to the amount, at least up to the amount that they're reimbursed by FEMA. Which is which could be less than I'm what saying we have put together through the budgetary hearing process for consideration. I'm saying at this it, point in time, that's what I'm willing to commit to, at least up to the amount that FEMA will reimburse. I'm not saying I won't go over. All you don't know, button your shirt, your heart's falling out. It was the money that was taken out of their budget anyway, correct? But which is only 75 percent of what we have appropriated or decided to appropriate, and now are cutting. Right. But my understanding is those costs may far exceed the cut that they receive. That's my understanding also, and I didn't have that information. So I don't, I really don't see the issue. There isn't one. It's being created out there, but there is no issue as far as I'm concerned. So I think they're going to be probably may be made whole. But you're not committing to make them whole. I'm committing. Are you committed to the level that you get reimbursed? reimbursed. Not my time. intent, Steve, just to be clear, okay, was that Greg at the time had predicted uh, that uh, the FEMA money would cover the, the cost and they would be reimbursed 75 percent. So there was a 25 percent shortfall if uh, originally we know if we have different information now, right? My intent was to find the additional money in October to make those budgets whole. That was my intent. Okay. Mine too. And yes. that was in spite of the fact that I'm not worried about the fire department because the fire department doesn't spend, you know, fifty thousand dollars and they've done and they've returned it to the town because they didn't need it every year. Then it's gone back and it's become free cash. So I'm not concerned about that at all. You know, I have to commend the chief for uh, for managing his his overtime budget. And we yeah we do know especially in the case of, of the fire department, right, why there's a big overtime number without adding additional personnel, okay? And you're right, the police, we've reduced the staff and the police by two, two offices. So there maybe is more pressure on the police overtime budget. But I wanted to separate the letter we got, what was oh, in yeah, the I newspaper the, from the, the, the this $40,000 issue. No, okay. I'm not reacting to the letter okay, at all. all right. it, it, it had, has no influence on, on me. It, okay. It's nice to see everybody signing on and, you know, sending me their, their messages. And, and I did read it and made for good reading. But, and, I, and I saw that as an old letter that was redated and said yeah. it, was, right. it was not really related to what we're talking right. about now. Uh, but they tried to tie it together, and that's fine. That's their choice. And I, and I don't know why they did that either. But, right. There's some things I can never figure out. Okay. But I just want to make sure that the board, at least the majority, or all of us at least who make a commitment one way or another whether or not we're, we're committed to uh, to restoring the funding one way or the other. So I can say right here I'm committed to uh, yeah. restoring that funding. As am I. Anybody else? <laughs> uh, in agreement with that. Well, you know, as the freshman selectman here, I, I'm going to take a different approach. Okay? Uh, I'm going to go talk to the police chief because I read the letter and, you know, I've read it three times. First time, I read it emotionally. Second time, I read it kind of 50-50. And then I took all the emotion out of it. And I'll tell you what, I think they're kind of, it's never suffer in silence. And I think they're just trying to tell us something. I may be naive of me, freshman, selectman. 
right i'm gonna go